Ahoy, and welcome back to Titanic Talkline. My name is Alexia, and I am excited to have on the show this week, I want to try to pronounce it like it's very foreign, Joanna Strasberg. I'm guessing that's probably not how you actually say your name on the day today. No, not usually, but it's very fancy. Thank you so Ooh, much for cool making me. it sound so exotic. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. And I just want to go straight into it, obviously, because I know that we are going to have a ton of, to talk about. So my first and like primary standard question for anyone who comes on the show is just, what is your Titanic story? Because I'm sure, as you know, everyone's is different. Um, mine is um, actually kind of typical. Um, I'm used to, I usually ask the questions, but um, I notice a lot of people um, that I speak with um, have a similar story to mine. Um, I became interested in Titanic as a small child mm -hmm. uh, when I was six years old. Um, this is kind of where mine is a little different. Um, I was uh, channel surfing at my grandparents' house because they were watching Dallas and they would ah. let me get away with just about anything, but I wasn't allowed to watch Dallas. So they sent me back in their room to uh, watch anything else but Dallas. Um, so fair. if you're old like I am and you know, you know, Dallas, I guess it wasn't a children's program. Um, so um, I went back in their room and I started just flipping. They had cable. And um, as a child of the 80s, we did not have cable. So I was like, ooh, I can just watch whatever. And I was looking for, of course, Nickelodeon because that's what everybody um, my age liked at, the, um, th at that time. So I was looking for Nickelodeon. And um, I came across um, something with ships in it. And I was like, oh, this looks interesting. Um, so there was all this dramatic movie. Uh, music and ships and um, I saw people underwater and there was a ship underwater and I was like oh this is cool so being the six-year-old that I was I was like what is this um, and I watched a little bit of it and lo and behold it was raised the Titanic um, ah. so I got to see the part where there and it comes up out of the water with the dramatic music and I was like oh um, and um, when I got home um, like any good six-year-old, I asked my parents a million questions and um, I was very interested. Um, so instead of trying to answer all those questions, my parents took me to the local library <laughs> for the Titanic books. Uh, so I did, uh, as a little child, I was there with these giant Titanic books, uh, you know, pouring through them, looking at um, all these beautiful pictures, which I now know are Ken Marshall paintings. And, um, you know, I want you to know more so later that same year, because I was six, uh, so this was like 1985-ish, uh, later that year, uh, I remember watching the news because I was that nerdy kid who watched news, the news with my parents. Um, I remember um, Peter Jennings uh, doing a report with um, Dr. Robert Ballard, and they were talking about finding the wreck of the Titanic. And oh, that was just the end for me. I was just hooked after that. Um, I had to... Uh, read everything, collect everything, um, watch every documentary that was ever made about the Titanic. And it's been like that since I was six years old. So now I'm 45. So we're going on almost 40 years of being interested in the Titanic. That was a really long story. But, um, you know, so I mean, we're talking about like scholastic book fairs. Um, I was like, not the kid looking at babysitter club books. I was like, where are your Titanic books? And um, so I, I did, I bought uh, a night to remember from Scholastic Book Club that came to my school. I bought, um, what was it, Exploring the Titanic by Bob Ballard uh, from Scholastic Book Club. Um, I was that nerdy kid. Mm -hmm. And it's been like that since I was six. Speaking of the Scholastic Book Fair. <laughs> I still go there. And I still I, buy Titanic books. <laughs> I, I want one of those to be, I think that local bookshops should set up like their version of a scholastic book fair, but like for adults and stuff, that would be awesome. But I feel like I remember getting a Titanic novel and I've looked it up between starting the show and now because I couldn't remember what it was called, but it was called Titanic. Oh my God. Now I'm double guessing <laughs> myself. It's either Titanic Crossing or Titanic Voyage. And it's like a young adult fiction book. <clears throat> excuse me, about, I think it was a fictional second class um, boy on the Titanic. And I think that was sort of just like a, a little impulse purchase. Because again, I saw the cover and it was like a boy in the water being rescued. It's like, that's not normally what the Scholastic Book Fair is trying to get us to buy. What's that? Give me that. I think I have that in, in the other room. <laughs> Do you? Okay, you might. If the guy's name, I'm pretty sure his name was like Albert 
Mm-hmm. I had a little I sister. Have- mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I have so many distinct, because I read this book cover to cover to cover to cover to cover to cover ad nauseum times. And it was a paperback. So eventually I mm-hmm. broke the spine and pages started falling out. But I remember reading this book because it was, like you were saying, one of the first instances that I had of the Titanic. And I was like, what the hell is this? What is this? And I'm a little bit younger than you are. Not by much. I was born in 89. So I remember seeing James Cameron's movie in theaters when I was little. And when I found out that it was a real thing, it just kind of blew my mind. Because at the time, I was, as you were saying, you were six. This is when I was six or seven years old. To me, movies were very different than reality. I didn't, I didn't get that yet. Because, you know, Snow White is a cartoon character. My mother is not a cartoon character. They're in for movies are not real. I mean, that that's how it, I looked at it. But you know, there's a Titanic cartoon. Do you know that anime? Oh my gosh, I have seen clips from that it's, thing, and it's really scary looking. It's bizarre. Um, yeah, I usually can't make it through more than a few minutes of it. It's awful. It's just really awful. But um, but no, I have that book. Um, I. I didn't, I don't think I bought it from Scholastic. I later on in life collected a lot of Scholastic books just because they're nice to have. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to reach out to, um, you know, younger people. Um, I used to be, I used to substitute um, in elementary school. So I always make sure I have a lot of um, books, you know, for different age groups. Um, And I, I work in a high school now as it's like a teacher's assistant. So I always have books on hand, um, you know, for all different ages and all different um, developmental ages. Um, so, um, um, yeah, that's one that I have. Um, and then I have like, um, they, there's a book too. Um, I don't think it's this classic book, but it's one of the choose your own ending books. Oh, I love that one. Those were really popular when I was young and I have the original one and then they re-released one too, uh, that or choose your own ending. Those are so cool. Oh, that's um, cool. But here at home, I have my own library. So I have them all like organized by fiction, nonfiction, young adult and children's box. So it's like, um, and in magazines and, um, I even have, there's a graphic novel, um, of, um, I can't, it's not that one. It's, um, oh, I'll have to go look at it. It's, um, it's a graphic novel of, um, it's another like popular scholastic type book. I think I got it from scholastic. That's the fun thing about having children of, of a variety of ages. Like my oldest is 20 and my youngest is seven. So, when they have a scholastic book club, I'm like, oh, do you want to go look at the book club? Like after school, I'll take you. Mm-hmm. Like, mom, you just want to look for books for you. I'm like, oh, I'll get you something too. Um, but they still have Titanic books at the scholastic book club. I, I think that's awesome. It's, it's kind of interesting when you look at the events throughout history that become, I don't even know how to explain it, but they kind of become their own. They take on a life of their own. Like they literally become their own thing to the point where it yeah. almost feels, at least to me, and I'm not known for thinking normally, so people are free to disagree with me on this, but it almost feels like Titanic now is almost of two minds where it's like, it's both the historical event and the cultural zeitgeisty concept. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and... Yeah, that's something I try to like. I try to like bring people back to like the historical event. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, you know, when you see it out in like pop culture, you know, what I try to do with like my social media platform is like, you know, let's come back to, you know, what really happened. You know, the passenger, the crew, they're real. Um, you know, the um, the artifacts that come up. You know, they're all linked to like the historical event. Yeah, you know, the the pop culture thing is is one thing, and that's really interesting. And sometimes we kind of drift over into that because sometimes the two worlds merge. Of course. Like you saw at Titanic, you know, um, we got to meet Don Lynch and uh, Louis Abernathy. So they kind of blend both worlds. You know, they were involved in like the 97 film, but they've also both been to the actual wreck of the Titanic. So you, they kind of have touched both sides of it, the history and you know, the pop culture part of it. So that's actually kind of interesting. You know, like as a child, I read Don Lynch's books and he was like mm-hmm. a huge hero of mine, you know? So, you know, fast forward 30 years and I'm on social media, you know, and I'm, you know, just scrolling through these groups and stuff and, you know, Don Lynch's name pops up and I'm like, Don 
Lynch. And I like, I remember like commenting, I'm like, are you John Lynch, the author? And he's like, yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah. and here, you know, at my little computer, like, oh my God. And I look back at, you know, my, my books, you know, and I'm like, I read all of his books, all of them when I was a small child. And um, I'm just like, I had a big fangirl moment there for a few minutes. I'm like, what is Don Lynch doing on Facebook? <laughs> he is. So. Just, just a small Don Lynch moment here. Don Lynch is one of the nicest people in yes. the world. He was on my show and I, I, it was in the process of earlier when I had moved. So I'd switched mm-hmm. time zones and <laughs> I got the time zone wrong. And instead of being a hundred kinds of angry at me, which he should have been, he was just mildly annoyed for like four seconds and then immediately got over it. And it's kind of like, that's very gracious because I was running very late for an extremely important person who probably has a lot of things to do, but you know, he still took the time to have a full conversation with me. And when he came to Titanic con, he was very nice and gracious. And I actually Googled, um, I looked up his name in the Titanic con group while you were talking just because of what you were saying. And there's a picture of Don Lynch and Louis Abernathy sitting together on the couch. Just, I think they're, ha- they're just chit chatting or whatever. And it's a really interesting representation, as you were saying, of how those two things end up coming together to create, <clears throat> excuse me, something really, really cool. Because, you know, there's a lot of thoughts and opinions on the Cameron film and we don't have to get too much into it, but mm-hmm. no matter what you actually think of it, it's like a lot of research really, really went into that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Really cool. Um, and, um, you know, I've talked to, um, you know, Don Lynch on you know, several, several different platforms, you know, um, I interviewed him one time for like a written interview and then I've talked to him you know, for Zoom events on several different, uh, occasions mm-hmm. and then getting to meet him in person. Um, it was just so nice just to sit down and have a conversation with him. Mm-hmm. Um, just one of the nicest people. And I've talked to a lot of people, um, mm-hmm. you know, and when you walk away from talking to someone like, you know, wow, that far exceeded any expectation that I had to talk to this person. Um, you know, that's, that's a good thing because sometimes, you know, you know, the quote, like never meet your heroes. Ugh, it shall be disappointed. Yes. You know, um, mm-hmm. but that was one of those talking to him, every experience I've ever had with him, and, you know, then meeting him in person, you know, every um, experience with him has been a positive one. Um, mm-hmm. uh, um, you know, so meeting that hero was a good thing. Um, you know, he's just one of those good people. And I, um, I agree 100%. That you have with him. Um, he's very humble. He's very knowledgeable. Yes. And um, he's just very, um, you know, willing to share that information with whoever has the time to listen um you know and uh yeah i just appreciate people like that and somebody else that's like that is george b um if you have the time to just sit down and talk to him you know on a one-on-one um you know basis and just you know um just just listen to what he has to say it's a really positive experience um and i just remember as a little girl watching him on that documentary um, talking about, you know, passengers and crew and um, then, you know, reading his books and stuff and, and then getting to meet him in person and just, um, you know, I worked with him, um, you know, on a couple of projects online and stuff, um, you know, before I met him in person. He's just a, a really genuine person. Um, He's so you know, nice. Just, I feel so privileged to have been able to to meet these kind of people. Um you know, I never thought that I would as a you know small girl, like in my little local library, you know, pouring over these books, trying to learn things. I never thought that I would ever be in a position to meet any of these people. And I feel so blessed to have been able to do that um, because I could I could sit here and pull my um, my Titanic um, research paper from 11th grade and show you my bibliography page where I cited all of these books written by these same people that I've met. Do um, you were- do you bring that to them and ask them to sign that? Because that would be, should. you should. And then when you get as many as you can, you should frame that. Because the- oh, you should. Oh my God, that is the cutest idea. 
I've never taken this anywhere. It's I typhoon. don't blame you. <laughs> it's typhoon an actual typhoon because that's how old I am. Jump. And, um, you know, I I was looking at the other day, you know, referencing how many books, look at all the books that I actually referenced. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I was like, wow, you know. Um, Can you show me the pages? Sorry, I haven't seen t typewritten pages in forever. <laughs> um, I'm completely serious. <laughs> Okay, hold on, let me see. This is great for a uh, for an audio podcast, by the way. Oh my goodness, that's inc no, it's I, it's focused long enough for me to see it. That's incredible because we have the luxury of delete buttons and stuff right now, guys. They, they did not have those on a typewriter, and this is not a two page thing she is showing me. This is this is a, this is a book. This is my handwritten. Um, oh my gosh, handwritten. So much uh, work. Yeah, I can see why you don't take this anywhere. <laughs> Um, I had an extra copy of the um, National Geographic 1985, like extra copy. So, oh my goodness, yeah, because that's a real page that you cut out of a magazine. I had to cut it out and um, mm -hmm. use that as the uh, uh, as my graphics for my research paper because we didn't have like Google or anything like that to you know put graphics in our research papers then. You guys have no idea how lucky, you know, this, uh, this generation is where you can just, uh, mm -mm. get right you know, into it with whatever paste, you need. Uh, mm -hmm. But some of my sources like are not still alive. Like when Craig That's, Wade and uh, yeah. Walter Lippard. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. So yeah. Um, but anyway, so I just thought that was kind of neat. No, I, no. I, I, but, uh, as incredible it is when people show me things like artifacts and stuff, which is super cool. I really like when people have things like this to show me. They're so, they're so personal and they really talk about how, how dedicated to the scene, like most people are like for, as you were saying, for most people, this doesn't, this didn't start five minutes ago. This is a 40 year long interest. And, you know, mm -hmm. For me, like when I saw the film when I was seven, I'm 35 now. That's almost 30 years or so. And it's just, it's so interesting to be able to track this with all the different people that I've spoken to. Because everyone seems to have, if not one, several sort of defining moments. And depending on everyone's age, it's really interesting to see what that is. Now, just for comparison, you said you uh, saw the film, um, like the 97 Cameron film when you were how old? Seven or eight, depending on if it was um, when in the year. Okay. So I saw it, I was 19 and it was, um, New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. 97 into 98. Um, I went with a group of friends who were not Titanic, um, enthusiasts whatsoever. Um, so into, um, into 97, 98, they stopped it at the, um, the intermission, you know, the part yeah. where they, they split it. Back when uh, they actually cared about our well-being and our blood flow in our legs. Yeah. So they did the countdown to midnight there. Happy New Year. The whole thing the theater did. Um, and then they resumed the movie. So we started it in 97, finished it in 98. So you can say that the Titanic movie lasted a whole, like, it finished the next year. Um. <laughs> And then uh, my friends looked at me at the end. They're like, uh, you are never picking another movie. Everyone died in this one. <laughs> I said, well, what did you expect? It was the Titanic, you know, do right. you think it was going to have a good ending? And they're That's like, super fair question, honestly. You know, they just look, they're like, you're never picking another movie. So um, it, that didn't go well with my friends. Um, but, uh, you know, so I had already graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. This was like, uh, I was going to business school then and uh, I was living, uh, I think I'd already moved out. I was living on my own and um, they're just like, no way. <laughs> uh, I no, enjoyed it. Me. But I was just blown away by it because, um, you know, by, by that time I was 19, I had been interested since I was six. Um, I was blown away by the wreck footage and um, being, yeah. seeing the ship uh, like that. Um you know, I thought at that time I was the only person in the world interested in Titanic because I had never met another person uh, that was interested in Titanic. And here was this big movie in the theater that was about Titanic. And I was like, wow, there must be somebody else out there like that is interested. You know, these books are written about it. 
this movie is about it. Where are all the people who are interested in Titanic? So um, I grew up at a time where there was no internet. There was no Google. There was no smartphones. You know, there was nothing. So finally, um, when I when I finally got on uh, social media, um, I found my people yeah. who were interested in Titanic. So that's been really nice to have a sense of community and to connect with other people who have the same interests that I do. And I've learned so much. And I've met just um, a whole host of people who are, you know, like-minded. And, you know, it's really nice to to be able to share interests with other people. It is so interesting how, especially now in the era of the internet, it's way easier to make these connections with people, you know, <clears throat> because as you were saying, back in the 80s and 90s, it was much harder to find people that were into these, what we were we refer to as like niche interests, mm -hmm. simply because you couldn't just go online and be like, hey, anybody want to discuss Titanic? Super bored right now. Hit me up. It That was not an option for you. And it's really easy to kind of take that for granted. But I think that something that we kind of miss, and I've talked about this a little bit before, is that sort of magic and wonder of showing up somewhere and being like, Oh wow, all these people are actually into the same thing that I am. It's so cool. It reminds me of like midnight book party releases at borders. Kind of. Um, Excuse me. I remember like um, when they used to release uh, movies at midnight, like at blockbuster. Oh yes. I, um, I bought my first copy of Titanic and um, it was a midnight release. So I remember getting my double VHS tape and my free poster and my free, um, like, uh, what was it? Um, $5 gift card with Jack and Rose on it. And um, hysterical. It was something else, a, a pin or something. I think I still have all of that. I think I still have the receipt and everything too. Um, hmm. And I'm not a huge movie, believe it or not, even though I kept all that stuff. I'm still a huge, like, history fan. Mm -hmm. or a history enthusiast. But um, again, it was just a sense of like um, community, I suppose, um, that, wow, there was something that was Titanic related when yeah. I thought nobody else was interested in Titanic. So I, I felt like a connection to it, like, um, you know, finally somebody is interested in Titanic. Mm -hmm. There's a movie. Um, so that was really neat, you know, for the late nineties, I guess. I still have all my stuff from then. I had, um, I worked at JC Penney in the late nineties. So mm -hmm. there was a whole host of, um, Jack and Rose shirts that came out because of the movie. And I have those and, um, I have books and I have like a poster book and all kinds of just weird nonsense that came out. So I like yeah. that though. <laughs> I like just, the idea of, yes, I still have these things and they make me happy because they're reminiscent of a time. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was fortunate enough, um, probably about 10 years ago, some just random person on Marketplace locally was selling all of his movie posters. It was somebody who had worked at a theater. And I was mm. like, do you have the Titanic ones? And he was like, sure. So for $5 each, I bought the actual theatrical release posters um, the double-sided, you know, backwards and forwards uh, theatrical release. Uh, oh, yes. I remember those. So I have those in their frame. And then, um, I'm happy to have those when they're huge, but. Yes. That's awesome. So I like all that. <laughs> I'm jealous. I don't have a whole lot of like retro stuff. Most of what I have is, um, it's just books and stuff because I've moved a lot of times over the past few years and I've gotten now like very wary about acquiring things and then having to let them <laughs> things that I really like and having to let them go. Well, the bad thing about like collecting things is if you move, you have to move all your stuff. Yes, you do. I've, I've is... realized that over the past few years. Um, but nonetheless, I keep collecting. And like I said, I've been collecting since I was sick. What's your favorite thing that you've collected? Not the most valuable, um, like your favorite. Somebody asked that in one of the groups um, recently. Hmm. And so I said, my answer was this in the group. I cannot pick one thing. Sure. So I posted a picture of my of myself. And it's of um, 
my um, Olympic class um, memorabilia, like the actual like real stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like um, it's an actual tile from the Olympic and a piece of molding from Olympic. And um, I have a few things that I've gotten from um, Kevin Saucier. Um, so they're like scraps of fabric and a piece of driftwood from the Titanic. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a little piece of Britannic wood, like pre-installation wood from the Britannic. And then um, I have a piece of wood that came off of the back of the big piece. And um, what else? What else is on that shelf? Um, a piece of rust from Titanic's bollard. And um, so like that whole shelf that has things from Olympic Titanic and Britannic on it. What I couldn't include was all my, I have a shelf of um, coal. So I have it in a bunch of different forms of coal. I have the original coal that I ordered off of TV for $19.99 plus shipping when I was watching the, how to, um, I think it was the failed attempt to raise a big piece. Mm. Um, but I still got my, the coal and, um, then I have like, uh, a snow globe with coal and, um, a little ship's wheel with coal and, mm. uh, acrylic Titanic with coal, several mm. different of Titanic coal. Nice. So those are my favorite things, like the actual stuff from the ships. Yeah. Oh, and I have a Titanic, but I mean, I have a, an Olympic like pool tile or, Oh, cool. Bath tile or something. So the th my favorite things are like all of those like original things. That's I fair. Suppose. I don't personally have anything original from any of the ships. It's kind of one of those things where I'm like, if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't, well, I don't, it's like, it's not my, I like collecting, but on the other hand, it's like, look, collecting things like that is not cheap. So, um, and it requires a lot of time and effort. So I like to admire other people's collections. Just like makes me happy that way. But I think that's really, really cool because also I like asking that question because everyone has different, some people who have a collection are like, this is my one favorite item. They, they know right away they're on it. And I honestly find that most people are like you where they're like, I simply cannot pick because everything is interesting for a different reason. And then I wear some of my, my favorite stuff. I mean, I, like I said, I can't just pick one thing. I have one little necklace that a friend of mine gave me that has a little piece of Titanic rust in it, like bollard rust, oh. it's like a little fleck of rust. And it's in a little like locket type thing. So it's from that's, the Titanic. That's really cute. Right at it. And then I have a little necklace that has a little chunk of Titanic coal in it that I wear. So those are very special to me mm -hmm. too, that I can, things that I can just wear with me. Um, and then I have my books too. So that's like, to me, like a totally different category because I have like special yeah. books that I like too. I get that. Like ask me to pick a favorite child. Um, I mean, don't you have one of those? <laughs> no, I don't. I no. love all kids you know um equally i really that's do what you're supposed to that that's what you're supposed to see say and do i'm not just saying that it's like you're, you're not supposed to have favorite children they're supposed to be favorite for different reasons like different children for different reasons i think there are qualities that i love you know with each child but they're all my favorites mm -hmm. that makes sense and there are certain things you know that i collect that are like you know there's one thing i really want and i see it on my show all the time there's a triangle if i ever get this it's gonna be my favorite thing there's a triangle. It's a um, um, pyramid. Um, and it has a piece of Titanic coal in it. I want that. So if I ever get that, that'll be my favorite thing. Where? How did that get made? Okay. Tell me the history of this this item, because I've never heard of it until you brought it, was, it up. It was some kind of like expo that um, RMS Titanic Inc. had. Um, I want to say it was in like Minnesota or something in the 90s. And it was at some kind of triangle shaped um like, um, uh, I mean, pyramid shaped, um, place. Kind of like and the Luxor? So, it wasn't at the Luxor. It but was, it's kind of like that though, or it's just like some reason they constructed yeah. a pyramid. Okay. Yeah, it was okay. It was at some kind of pyramid shaped, um, event hall or something. And, um, they made these special little, pyramid shaped acrylic looking um tchotchke kind of things with titanic coal inside and they sold them just there hmm. and i saw one one time on the internet not for sale it was just a picture of it 
I've never seen one for sale. Um, I just I Googled know. it. This is a piece of coal purchased at the Memphis Pyramid at the Titanic exhibit. Okay. Yeah. I Googled it because I was having a hard time visualizing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's, it's, um, yeah, it looks like a clear acrylic pyramid paperweight with a piece of coal suspended in the center. Mm -hmm. And like on eBay, they have like pamphlets for this event uh, for sale and they have like, like paper paraphernalia from the event for sale, but Mm. no like acrylic pyramid with the coal for sale. I don't know. Yeah, I can see why it's going to be hard to find. (laughs) That is so fascinating. Of odd little coal like items. Um, Coal seems to be your little niche thing. You not in a bad way, but it's like you like you like the coal, which is I like that. I like odd things with the coal in it. Like I have this little acrylic like Titanic with coal in it. Um, and I have a little ship's wheel to call it. I have like weird little things with the Titanic coal in it. Um, so I don't want to. <laughs> I like, like it. I just find it. Um, I Googled it. It's so profoundly 90s. And that's probably why you're having a hard time finding it. That's it. why I'm really like drawn to it because it is very 90s. Yeah. And it doesn't come with a certificate of authenticity that's on the bottom. Like if you flip it over. Oh, I saw that in the like, description. It's got all the COA stuff like on the bottom of the pyramid. It's really just interesting. I don't know. No, that's cool. It's just isn't that weird. That is odd. Yeah. It is so interesting, and part of the reason I started this show is to be like to talk about the stuff that people make, inspired by and related to the Titanic, because it's everything. It is everything from like replica costumes to mm-hmm. uh, toys, clocks, mm-hmm. pyramids. Yes. Apparently, <laughs> oh, it's so bizarre. Um, yes, the more people I talk to, the more like you know, deep of a dive you get. Um, I have seen some of the most unique things. Like people make like stuffed Titanics, like stuffed ones. And I mean, you know, when you go to Pigeon Forge, you can buy a stuffed one, but people like yeah. actually make them or they crochet them. I've even seen people like crochet like um stuffed Titanics. And I'm I like, like to crochet and that just I'm just picturing in my yeah. brain. I'm like, With how the, hard yeah. would that be? Like, I don't even know if I want to set myself up for that nonsense. Thank it's like, my goodness. It Google it. You can crochet your arm. That's crazy. Yes. With the funnels and everything. Mm-hmm. I believe that. I'm just, it's like, um, it never fails to us down. Did you have the diamond art? You have like the whole diamond art niche. Mm-hmm. People um, doing that. And then you have, um, what are some other, um, Titanic quilts. Yeah, um, I've seen those. So now, I mean, you probably saw the post from the, um, the museum attraction in Pigeon Forge. Or they just had those, but I mean, I've seen them before too. Like just all over the country, people making Titanic quilts. Mm-hmm. And then, um, what are some other things I've seen? Um, if you go to Etsy, people just all over the place with their like little Titanic crafts and stuff. And I'm just like, wow, you know, um, people with their paper stuff and their um, images and their stickers and their birthday party decorations. And I'm just sitting here like, wow, okay. Um, it just goes like, deep it does and, then, and i'm like wow i'm just so not talented but i'm just not i just sit and look at this i'm like why can't i do any of this oh, um, i get that i'm just oh my God. <clears throat> i used to make hair bows i never made the titanic hair bows though like when i do that again when girls were really little i used to make them like hair bows of every everything you can imagine but i never made titanic ones um but uh yeah i've um i've noticed all kinds of really neat titanic crafts and stuff it's interesting there's so many and they just keep expanding i think i find that that's what i find interesting and i know that some there's people that think that like certain things that people make are like tasteless or they shouldn't be done or like whatever and i can understand where people are kind of coming from on that like i understand if you don't if if it doesn't strike the right chord with you i just find it interesting that especially in such a small niche community that there feels to be a need for that because there's room for everyone even if you even if it's like okay yeah maybe you don't think that a pool floaty in the shape of the um the floating piece that Mm -hmm. rose was lying on is like maybe you don't need to buy one of those but 
oh, come on. What's the harm in letting somebody else? I'm telling you what, if a store down the road was selling one of those, I would go get one and just put it with my display in the other room. I don't think I'd use it in the pool. I will say, though, right. like down the street, every fall, they have one of those big Titanic slides for the kids. Oh, yeah. I drive past it and I'm like, I don't know. That kind of, I'm just like, I don't know. To me, that's a little odd. I could see how people would get offended by that. Have I let my kids go and slide on it? Yes. Did I feel weird about it? Yes. I don't know. It's weird, but I don't know. I'm not going to get all offended about it. Go like boycott the whole like pumpkin patch that has it mm. and, you know, cause a big scene about it. I think that's a little odd. Yeah. But I don't know. But I'm, but with you, I'm like, I'm not going to get all bent out of shape about some stuff. There's like a Titanic video game that I would like, you know, like I'm talking about like one of these 1980s ones that used to mm -hmm. have in the pit, um, like that lights up. It's like huge. If somebody offered to give me that, I would not turn it down because that's just a piece of Titanic memorabilia. I, I didn't know that existed. That sounds cool. It is just really awesome. The only one I've seen on Marketplace, though, is like broken. It's for parts. But mm. I wouldn't turn it down because it's just a piece of like um, memorabilia to somebody that was like their way of contributing to the whole Titanic conversation. You know, maybe they didn't know how to carve like something really cool out of wood or, you know, paint something or make a quilt. And but they did not know how to to build a video game so that was their contribution um you know not everybody can write a book or you know make a movie so they're gonna contribute to you know the titanic story in whatever way they can yeah and other people might think it's you know, it's because everyone's worldview, is, is like everyone's view of the world is different. Like we all have that one friend. Everyone has a friend that is so positive that sometimes it annoys you and you're just like, how, how do you do that? And I'm sure we all have one friend that's always negative. That's me, by the way. There's that one friend that's always <laughs> negative and you're just kind of like, could you lighten up every once in a while? But both of us could describe the exact same event to you. Just might sound a little different coming from us both. But I guess. Hmm? So I I was gonna say some of the things I collect are really tacky, but um, they're Titanic, and I think that they are part of the the narrative. And um, if it's Titanic, I usually just try to scoop it up. Like right, I have, give, I was about to say, give me your tackiest few. You, I asked you your fav your favorites, but give me give me the ones where you're just kind of like, yeah, you know. Okay, yeah, some of them, um, some of them my friends are like, um, like on my show, Dan and I do. Um, we have like a little weird format. I told you about it. Um, mm -hmm. We do like books and memorabilia. Um, so every once in a while, I'll bring in something tacky and um, just for laughs. You know, I have a cookie jar that's really hard to get, by the way. And it sells for like hundreds of dollars on um, eBay. Um, my friend Dave Gardner helped me get it. It came from um, somewhere in New Jersey. So it's just kind of a joke. Like, uh, I found it, or my fr my friend from Australia actually found it on Marketplace. He's like, "Hey, Joe, get this. It's I found cheap. it." So, um, so it's it was not cheap, cheap on now. If you want one, um, no, it's not. So this was a few years ago. So it was cheap on Marketplace. So, um, I messaged my dear friend Dave Gardner. I was like, "Dave, I found this this uh, Titanic cookie jar. It's in such and such." It was like, you know, I was like, "Hey, is there any way?" I said, "How far away from you is this?" And he was like, "Oh, it's not too far. It's like a day trip." I was like. It's if you know if we pay for it i was like will you, will you go get it and i'll pay for shipping for, for you to ship it to me it's mm -hmm. like all right why not so so Dave Gardner gets on the staten island ferry goes and gets my cookie jar from this really nice lady and then he starts taking pictures of my cookie jar's trip back across the <laughs> staten island ferry like with the uh statue of liberty in the background the ambiance and then um, he mails it to me with um, a few little gifts from New York. And um, yeah, it took a, it definitely took a journey. And um, so that's probably the tackiest thing that I own, but it had a fun little journey here. And um, it, it split in half 
um, you know, incorrectly, <laughs> open in half, half in the right way. Um, and then the lid tight comes off it's the funnels are like the lid. Um, so that's probably the tackiest thing, on, but it's rare. Um, because when it was released by ENSCO, I think in 97, 98. Um, I just Googled it because I was curious. <laughs> 97, 98. So um, when it was released by ENSCO, um, it, they people complained because they thought it was offensive. So they pulled them off the shelves. So not that many were sold. And it was like a series of four things. It was the cookie jar, the matching salt and pepper shakers. Um, it was a bank that looks like the Titanic sinking. <laughs> and it was a um, nightlight. The nightlight's actually beautiful. Um, mm. It's ceramic and it's just a gorgeous, um, you know, rendition of the Titanic that lights up. So I have all four things. Um, awesome. I mean, I should get, you know, a fortune. Um, and I had some help from some friends um, help me find these and get them from odd places. But, um, but yeah, the tackiest thing is the cookie jar. And then the second tackiest is also kind of rare. It's a, um, it's a Titanic whiskey decanter from oh. 1970. Um, it's, it's rather tacky. Um, so like the, it's, it's, it's glass or ceramic or whatever. And Sorry, the, I Googled it. The end of it twists off and then there's a cork up under that. And so you pull the cork and fill it up with whiskey. Um, you should have led with this. <laughs> that's rather um, tacky as well. But if you get lucky, you can find one on, on Marketplace uh, for not too too much money. But the How colors you... are not right. <laughs> no, the funnels are red. But um, <laughs> have you have you tried using this? No. Okay. Um, the problem with these are they're from 1970. And um, mine, just like most of the other ones, the cork is um, pretty um, decayed. Uh, yeah, no, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, and then the the end of it doesn't stay on, so I kind of like glued it on a little bit or taped it. Um, I I I'm wondering just because I'm looking at how this is made, and I'm sure you could probably speak to it more. This looks like if you wanted to use it, it would be very awkward. Yeah, I think it would be. I don't know because it's it's lay you ha it's laying down, so I would I would be concerned about it leaking. Yeah. Okay. So for for our friends at home, it's the ship like sailing on the water. So it's in that direction. And you basically, the cork is the stern. Mm -hmm. So you pull the stern off, but as, as you were just saying, that means that it's laying horizontally mm -hmm. the whole time. And I'm just trying to think too, like trying to pick it up. I'm like, this just seems like I would drop it. Oh, and then I have a Titanic asterisk. <laughs> Okay, so that's your my top three. All right, I'm Googling this as well. No, this it's isn't like, that bad. It's big. No, no, no. I don't know if you look at the right one. I've only seen one other one like this. It's okay. big and black. It's got like, I think, like the white star line emblem in the middle. And it's ceramic. I think it's the white star line. But it says Titanic or something. It's just, um, oh my gosh, it's horribly tacky. But I've never seen, I've only seen one other like, like it um, since I bought it. So that's why I got it because it was five dollars, and um, uh, yeah, I bought it from the Baileys. Remember from Titan, one of the Titan Titanicons, um, where ah. they were stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so I thought it was just so unique and so like um tacky that I bought it. Okay, so this is not the one that you have, but if you Google Titanic ashtray, you'll get what looks like. A slightly thicker, it's like a huge, very tall. I've never seen an ashtray this tall, by the way. There's like, a different type of ashtray. There is. Okay, yeah. So this isn't even like an ashtray that's a normal size. That's a depth of about two inches. This looks like it's about six inches tall. And it has what appears to be a printed beer koozie with an image of the Titanic around it. <laughs> Joanna just gave me an A plus look. Yeah, it's four inches tall. Have you seen, did, did you find it? Mm -mm, I haven't seen mine. Okay. If you find yours, send it to me because that's not what I was looking for. But if you had told me that this is what you owned, I would have said this for sure is extremely tacky. I'm sending it to you on Facebook just in case you okay. want to take a look at it. But <laughs> it's yeah, very mine is just like I said, I've seen another one like it because and there's no telling where they got it from because you know the Baileys went like everywhere 
all over the yeah, world. Yeah, they're they're also collectors. So like you said, it's not like they could maybe trace all their sources. I know. So I was like, well, this is wild. But going back to as you were saying for like these, these things are rare, by the way, as she was mm-hmm. saying. So the uh, cookie jar, the cheapest one that I found is $200. The best offer right now for the light is 225 and the whiskey decanter, I can't find one on sale, actually. So, oh, I found one for six hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, these are fun and rare things, and I love how they are simply a slice of life of what we thought was great decor at certain mm-hmm. decades. Yeah, and see, I mean, I try not to be you know, disrespectful with the things I no. get, but. And while these things are really tacky, the reason I get them is because they are part of the narrative. They are part of pop culture. They, to me, these are part of the history of, of, I guess, how the Titanic story is told throughout the decades, throughout, um, you know, our lifetime. Um, I like that. So I, you know, I want to preserve history in any way that I can. So I have the real stuff. Um, I have the tacky stuff. And then, you know, I try to, you know, through the social media and the stuff that I do, I try to, you know, share both sides of the story. Um, you know, and when I, when I talk to people, um, you know, whoever I'm talking to, I'll talk, I'll talk to anyone. I'm going to just put that out there, you know, um, I mean, just about anyone. Um, you know, I'll talk to artists, I'll talk to, um, you know, um, explorers, I'll talk to, um, authors, um, just anyone who will talk to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I try to just get the story behind the story, um, and, and make it as, um, you know, interactive as I can. And, um, you know, I try to tie it to, you know, history and tie it to, you know, what's going on in today's narrative. Um, because I want to preserve that moment in history so that when I'm gone, this will still be here. Um, so that's really my purpose and what I try to do. Um, and um, some of these people that I talk to might not otherwise be accessible mm-hmm. um, to just the everyday person and how I can talk to them. I don't know why. So these people talk to me. I don't know. I wonder that I about know. myself as well. I'm sort of like, who gave me the authority to do anything? Sometimes they contact me like, Hey, what do I have to do to be on your show? And I'm like, hmm? you've done it. Congratulations. Okay. Just <laughs> let me know when you want to talk, you know, just when are you available? <laughs> I think what it does is reaffirms something that I personally believe, which is just that people out there want to tell their stories, especially when it's when it's something that they didn't realize other people were as interested as them. Because you were saying how exciting it was when you were 19 to finally be around other people and be like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. it's really interesting to have a niche interest and be like, hey, I want to talk about this and have someone, especially someone you don't know, go, great. And are you available? (laughs) Um, you know, I'm amazed, you know, all the time, uh, you know, strangers will be like, oh, you like Titanic? Yeah, I do. How'd you know? Oh, you're lanyard. I wear like a, um, a lanyard at work with my keys. Um, my work keys on it is the Titanic one that I got from, um, the museum in Las Vegas. Um, so oh, they're like, you're like, you like Titanic? Yeah. How'd you know? Oh, your lanyard says it. Oh yeah. Um, And that just opens the door sometimes to just talk about, you know, what my interest is and what their interest is. And, you know, next thing I know, oh, how'd you get interested? Well, oh, wow. How about that? And, you know, who? And, you know, I know that person. And, you know, it's just very interesting um, how you get a conversation sometimes. So you never know who you're going to meet or who you're going to talk to or where that conversation is going to lead. Would you say that, you know, you never know who you're going to meet? Where you're going to wind up. Just Mm -hmm. last night you were uh, sleeping under a bridge and now here Mm -hmm. you are having champagne with you fine people. You could say that. You could say that. For those of you who can't Mm -hmm. see, um, Joanna (laughs) just got out from under a bridge. (laughs) Sometimes I feel. (laughs) 
I feel that way all the time. So completely related to nothing but sort of, I have, um, I play roller derby and I have a, one of my show stickers on my helmet so that sometimes it will spark the conversation as you're saying with people that you're not even expecting to talk to. Mm-hmm. I'm like walking around with it under my helmet, under my arm at um, like a tournament. And someone's like, oh, it's a Titanic. Cool. Like I wasn't expecting that, but yeah, you never, you never know who's going to feel prompted to walk up to you and say something when you're sporting their niche interest. And it's just, as you said, it's really fun to see where that conversation goes because sometimes I was not expecting somebody's Titanic story to start with, well, I was raised in a cult, for example. But yeah, that's, yeah, I was kind of like, wow, this is a story I did not know I was going to get to hear today, but man, (laughs) am I excited. (laughs) You know, I, how did I think my day was going to start that way? It's it's you learn so much. Stuff. More than one person has come on my show and credited Titanic with helping them discover their bisexuality. It's it is fascinating what what people like. Not saying this in a gossipy way. Like, oh my gosh, can you believe what people tell you? But it's more like it is so <laughs> cool what people will tell you when when you start talking about this kind of thing. It definitely opens a door to um, to a lot of things um, yeah. when people find out that you, know, you have that that interest they're like oh um or then people walk up to say do you know that it sank because um because the officer like left with the keys to the binocular um locker and i'm like yeah no that's not true no, or, do you but... know that the titanic and the olympic were switched yeah no that's not true do you know that it sank because um there there is a the, the coal was on fire yeah that's not true do you have the Titanic and the um, Lusitania were sister ships? No, that's not true. Oh, I've uh, not heard that one before. Yeah. Or, you know, did you know that? And I'm like, no, it's not true. Um, <laughs> but I think it's important, to, as you were yeah, saying, to do it as you're doing, to be gracious when people do that kind of stuff. Because some people are not saying it to be antagonistic. Some people are saying it because they read it on the Internet somewhere and they think it's true. Um, you know, and I'm usually not a, a, you know, a jerk about it. I'm like, you know, that's actually not true. And let me tell you why. Um, or, you know, I'll like pull my phone out and I'll be like, let me show you something. Yeah. Um, because I have all these f- um, pictures stored on my phone. So I'm like, let me show you why I know that the Titanic's at the bottom of the ocean. And I have a picture of the propeller with uh, the 401 uh, on the propeller. Mm-hmm. Or um, I'm like, you know, Titanic sister ships are actually Olympic and Britannic. Let me show you a picture of them. Um, and, um, you know, I'll, I'll show them. I'm like, well, actually, you know, there was a, a coal fire on the Titanic. And it mm-hmm. may have kept the Titanic afloat a little bit longer because they moved a lot of that coal from one side of the ship to the other. So it caused it to kind of like, you know, um, lean to one side of the ship. But the Titanic hit the iceberg on um, this side of the ship. So as it sank, it filled up with water and it kind of evened out. So, so Thomas Andrews thought it was going to sink in this amount of time. It actually took it a little bit longer to sink because maybe where they had to shift some of that coal over, um, that might have bought it a little time. And they just look at me like, well, the, the steel was weak. I'm like, well, they brought a lot of that steel up. And they've tested it and they found it to be really good shape. And they've tested a lot of the rivets too. And they found that to be really good shape, even after being underwater all these years. And I just get blank stares. Well, how do you know? I'm like, because I know some of the people who brought the the steel up. Yeah. And I know some of the scientists who, who analyzed some of the test. Yeah. But I get these looks like, really? <laughs> I mean it's they don't have to say that. yeah some people just don't know and it's you know not trying to be like super rude to them but if if you don't know you don't know you know you just don't and they're like exactly. like you know they've tested that steel and it's found been found to be okay really strong steel made in Belfast or made in Ireland you know Titanic was put together by hand it's probably it was probably a lot stronger than some of the ships they make today and they just look at me like <laughs> it just 
<laughs> I I hate this to criticize the Titanic, but it just was not built to slam directly into icebergs. And that honestly was its big problem. Mm -hmm. But I mean, what ship really is made to slam into an iceberg? And I mean, and that's the thing, like, I was about to use a modern cruise ship as a demonstration, but those things are so big, they might actually be able to take out an iceberg at this point, considering how large they are. But, you know, it's you still... Across the Concordia, what did that run into? A sandbar? Yeah, it ran aground on the rocks, I think. Yeah. So I mean, not, either way, that's not good. I mean, yeah, that ran into some rocks. I mean, I can't imagine that it would do too well if it hit an iceberg. No, I mean, we're not... We don't design, like, we don't design aircrafts to be, like, anti-meteor. Because mm -hmm. there's no way. If a giant flaming meteor came out of the sky, there's no way a Boeing is going to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And that's not the fault of the plane. It's not going to be like, you should have made that plane, but how? Mm -hmm. I know, you should have made, you know, the um, Costa Concordia, like, rock group. To be fair, the dude who was driving it was also being a bit of a weirdo. Yeah. So it's like, you should yeah, have also like maybe picked a different captain than Captain Wahoo over here. Exactly. Like, you should have, like, made an automatic pilot to, you know, know when the captain is not suitable to drive the ship. Oh I mean, you can't, like, um, you can't foresee every single um, emergency or, um, you know, man-made or nature or natural that's going to happen to every um, ship or aircraft or anything that's out there I mean, it's impossible that's why we use the phrase you know an act of god of a miracle of nature a force of nature because sometimes you know they they're literally that there has to be some oversight i mean honestly i mean like with the titan you know there has to that, be some that man <clears throat> I don't even feel like I'm at liver. Like I'm not, I don't even feel like I have the authority to speak on that, but I have so many opinions. Mm -hmm. Mostly yeah, just because. We don't want to delve into that, but I mean, you know, Oof. there at some point there has to be oversight, you know, with the Titanic, you know, it wasn't made to, you can't blame it on the steel. You can't blame it on the coal fire. You can't blame it on, you know, um, Captain Smith, you can't blame it on, you know, the iceberg. You can't, it was a ship. The ship was not designed to run into an iceberg. The iceberg was there. You know, there were certain weather conditions, you know, was it a false horizon? You know, there was no moon, you know, but basically, like you said, the ship just wasn't built to run into an iceberg. And that's what happened. Yeah. And, you know, that could also open a whole new can of worms or, well, they should add that, that, that. Here's the thing that I would like to say to everyone who does that kind of stuff. This is 2024. And that was 1912. We can't, we can't, you know, it would be amazing if there was some way to, to save 1200 people from dying at sea in any era. But I can't do that. Um. But, you know, because the Titanic sank, so many things have changed. It's true. Um, now there's ice patrol. Mm -hmm. Now there are more safety precautions. Mm -hmm. There are um, enough lifeboats for everybody on board. Thankfully. There are, um, you know, 24-hour uh, radio monitoring. I mean, there is 24-hour radio monitoring. I mean, there are just mm -hmm. so many things. There are lifeboat drills. You know, as soon as you, almost as soon as you get on the ship. So, you know, bad things happened. Good things, um, you know, lessons were learned, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. People are, you know, people took the all that to heart and, and good things uh, came, up, came about because of a tragedy. So, yeah. you know, it's a shame yeah. that it took that to happen, though. Yeah, it is. But um, before I uh, wrap up and let you go and get back to your life, could you tell everyone about your show and where they? I will obviously, of course, have all of this in the description box below. So if you are like driving or doing something where it is not safe for you to write this down, please don't worry. There are safer avenues for you to do this. Okay, sure. Um, probably a lot of you don't uh, realize that um, I'm in a bunch of different groups. Um, 
So my primary, um, she's everywhere. My primary place is I have a page called RMS Titanic Reflections. Um, that is my jumping off point. Um, we have two groups that are associated with RMS Titanic Reflections, which is Great Olympic Class Ships um, by RMS Titanic Reflections and um, uh, Titanic Adventure Out of Time Forever. Those are the two groups associated with RMS Titanic Reflections. And we are about to launch a new group uh, very soon this summer. So stay tuned for that. Any um, details on that group or is that still under wraps? Still under wraps, okay. but it's coming soon. Okay. Um, so we have Instagram um, associated with the with that RMS Titanic Reflections. And I just um, delved into uh, TikTok. I'm old and I'm on the TikTok. I don't know what to say. Um, but that's RMS Titanic Reflections as well. All one and, word? Um, I don't know. I'm guessing so. I don't think TikTok can have like spaces or like weird characters in it, can it? Yeah, I don't think so either. Okay. But I, I don't started, have one, so. I just started it and I don't know, apparently both of the the videos I put out there were violations. I don't know. I got to keep working at that. <laughs> but I just can't picture you having violations. That sounds like something I would do. I don't know. I'm going to keep <laughs> working on TikTok. Okay. Um, so anyway, so there's that. And then I have two um, like live streaming platforms uh, under RMS Titan Reflections. I've got the 401 with my um, co-host, Dan, co-host Dan Curley. We do um, uh, like a late night um, talk show, which is wild and crazy. And we never know who's going to show up or what's going to happen. <laughs> we have some guest co-hosts. Uh, Lexi is going to be joining us on the 22nd, right? It's true. 20- is it uh, this month or next month? This month? Before? This month. This month. This month. Yeah. Oh, okay. my- <laughs> we- <laughs> no, I think it is this month. This is how good we are at planning, you guys. Um. So that one's kind of wild and crazy. And it's just so much fun. Um, like uh, this past Saturday night, we had Joshua Milford join us and then Steve Hall popped in and then Bruce Beveridge popped in. It was fun. A great name. It was just great. Um, so that was fun. And then, okay, so those are my my things. And then and I also help out with um, Ships of the World, which is like huge. And then I help out with all the Fox Starline stuff. Um, and then... I also help out in this really fun group called uh, Remembering Titanic. That was the very first Titanic related anything that I started helping out with. And it's a great little private group and it's just so much fun. Uh, Robert Stevens um, is the head admin there and it's just a fun little group. It's still private. Um, all of my groups are private still. Um, so they're kind of small. Um, Ships of the World is wide open and it's huge, but it's so much fun. Um, and uh, Fox Star is, um, is, public and um it's a lot of fun too but um that's fox star like all kinds of ships and then fox star plant plantations which is just really fun i live in virginia so um i'm around all kinds of really beautiful homes and plantations so i get to you know, contribute to that too so it, it's a lot of it keeps you busy you weren't ready for all that were you <laughs> i kind of was because i know that you do a lot i didn't know all that you did but i know that you do a lot that i knew People are probably really sick of seeing me. Sometimes they show up and they're like, are you over here too? Yeah, I'm here to deal with it. Shut up. (laughs) Uh, Well, thank you so much for coming on. As you just told us, you you have (laughs) a lot going on. So please go out and check out all of her projects, all the stuff that she's going to be on. And um, if I'm not mistaken, you will be at the Titanic convention later on this year. I will. Titanic on August, um, what is it? 9 through through 11. And Pigeon Forge. Woo-hoo. And Pigeon Forge. Yeah. So come uh, come out and see us both. We will be there. Uh, once again, Joanna, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. And I, it was fun. And I will talk to more of you guys later. Bye. Bye.